So our today lecture is going to be scapula and in the scapula we are going to finish everything about the scapula but before going to that we are going to write out the outline of what we'll be doing today about the scapula. So what we'll be doing today basically is um, the introduction introduction to the scapula and next we'll be doing side determination of the scapula side determination then we'll do osteology of the scapula then we'll now do the attachments of muscle as well as ligament concerning the scapula and finally we'll be doing what is called as the ossification Classification and the clinical anatomy. So this is basically what we'll be doing in today's class. So the introduction. Uh, if you are asked to give a brief introduction about the scapula what would you say about the scapula and looking at the scapula okay introduction to the scapula is that the scapula if you look at the scapula closely it is a thin bone the scapula is very thin and flat it's a thin bone and its location is that it is located at the back at the back region that is the upper part of the back is where the scapula is located so if we want to use anatomical terms to describe and to talk about the introduction, we say that the scapula is a thin bone. It's a thin bone that is what located at the back or posterolateral aspect of the back. Posterolateral aspect of the back. So the scapula is a thin bone that is located on the posterolateral aspect of the back. Now the back is posterior because in anatomical terminology, posterior means backward. When a structure is being back or is being more in back than another structure in the body, that structure is said to be in posterior direction. So the scapula is lying at the posterior aspect, but at that posterior aspect, it is also lying lateral because if we check the body plane now, using mid sagittal plane now, you see that the scapula is moving away from the midline. If this is your body, and then this part now is the middle part of the body, the scapula is located somewhere around here in the body. So it's away from the midline normally, it's away from the midline. So it, that is why it is called as posterolateral aspect of the back. So that is a good introduction of the scapula. The scapula has what is called as three borders. Three borders. It has two surfaces. And three processes. The scapula has what, three borders two surfaces and three processes. But before we go into the borders and surfaces, let's talk about the side determination. Side determination. Now we have already learned that in our previous class that we can use three major anatomical terminologies to determine sides of any bone, no matter the way the structure of the bone looks. We can actually use three anatomical terminology. What are these anatomical terminology we learn? We say we can use media and lateral, a structure being more closer to the midline of the body than another structure is known as what is called as media. While a structure that is further away from the midline of the body, if this is the midline, structure that is further away from the midline is called as what? Lateral. So let's say we want to use lateral and media to determine the sides of this scapula here a side determination let's see that if we want to talk about the lateral aspect of the scapula now if you look at the scapula closely the medial side the medial border of the scapula is usually what 
usually facing the midline of the body where your spine or spinous process pass through if this is your spinous process now the medial border is usually facing what the spinous process and the lateral border is usually facing what the outer part of the body so if you want to use media and lateral we say that the lateral border of the scapula this is the lateral border of the scapula so the lateral border of the scapula is what arise from where arise from what is called as the glenoid cavity of the scapula at this point is the glenoid cavity and then terminate away at the inferior angle of the scapula so this is what is about the so this is what is about the lateral side determination of the scapula we see that the lateral border extends from where the glenoid cavity glenoid cavity and terminates away at the inferior angle of the scapula at the inferior angle of the scapula that is where the lateral border is and we can also see that the lateral border is thick is thicker as compared to the medial border the medial border of the scapula is usually thin because of what uh, what it does by the attachment of muscles it will get so it is usually thin as compared to the lateral border the lateral border is thicker so that is a good site determination let's say we want to use posterior as last and true to determine the site and we see that posterior is a structure that is being at the back side more than another structure in the front and then we see that anterior is a structure being more in front than another structure in the body so we want to use anterior and posterior to determine the side if we look at this clavicle now this one is the anterior view and this is the posterior view of the clavicle this is the posterior view and this is the anterior view of the scapula so let's say the side determination using anterior and posterior if we check this scapula now we see that the anterior border is well concave now the whole of this surface is going inside so it's concave and it presents what three different ridge called as ridge one ridge two and ridge three so that's a good side determination the anterior border the anterior surface what is concave and present three ridge this three ridge is used for what attachment of muscle let's see the posterior border the posterior border is what is convex in a way and then it contains the spinous process of the scapula this is the spinous process contains the spinous process of the scapula the spinous process now divide the posterior aspect of the scapula that is the back into upper and lower parts the upper part is smaller as compared to the lower part so that's a very good side determination after knowing this side determination we can also use superior and inferior to determine the size of the scapula let's say we want to use superior if we check this scapula this is the anterior surface but this is the superior border of the scapula this is superior and this is the inferior part of the scapula this is the superior part of the scapula so we want to if you are asked to check the side determination using superior and inferior what would we say about it we can say that the superior border presents what is called as a notch this thing in anatomy any small depression that is going inside or that is like a hole in anatomy is called as a notch or a tobacco so it is it presents what is called a notch called as the supra scapular notch that's what the superior border presents so that's a very good side determination the inferior angle of the scapula we want to use inferior to determine the side we see that the inferior angle is a point where the medial border this is the medial border and the lateral border meets where the medial border and the lateral border meets forms what is called the inferior angle of the scapula so that's a very good side determination now let's see the osteology of the scapula the osteology of the scapula is usually based on the bony landmarks what the scapula possesses before we deal with the side determination we have already covered most of the bony landmark but let's finish it up the scapula possesses what is called a glenoid cavity that is this point here glenoid cavity that is the point where the scapula is going to articulate with the head of the humerus to form the word glenohumeral joint glenohumeral joint 
or the shoulder joint so that's a that's a bony landmark in the scapula it contains the spinous process at the dorsal surface it also contains the supra scapular notch that small depression going inside in the superior border of the scapula this is the superior border of the scapula so this small depression going inside before the coracoid process of the scapula is called the supra scapula notch so that's a very important osteology or bony landmark in the scapula we also have the acromion process is the terminal end of the spinous process and it's also a bony landmark we have the inferior angle we have a lateral border medial border and then we have the infraglenoid tobacco as well as supraglenoid tobacco present around here the supraglenoid tobacco is present at the upper border of the glenoid cavity it's a point where a muscle is going to get ovation from as well as the infraglenoid tobacco is also a point where a very important muscle in the upper limb is going to get origin from so those are what is called as landmarks of the scapula the spine also has what is called as leaf upper and upper leaves and what lower leaves that's a very important landmarks of the scapula so these are very important landmarks that is present in the scapula and this landmark is also used for what side of attachment of muscle in the scapula so after knowing the osteology of the scapula various parts where the scapula possesses let us see the attachment of muscle muscle attachment to the scapula if we want to look at the medial border of the scapula Media border. We want to look at the medial border, which is this side. The medial border is closer to the spinous process of the human body, right? The spinous process, which is very long, which comes from the brain, from the skull downward, from the nausea line. This is the skull, for example. This is the nausea line or occipital protuberance of the head of the skull now the spine continues from this point downward now the part of the scapula that is facing the spine the spinous process of the body is called as the medial border now what are the muscles that are attaching to this medial border the muscles attaching to this medial border is the following muscles we are going to discuss okay at the upper part of the medial border of the scapula presents a muscle called as the levator scapulae muscle the levator scapulae muscle is going to get attachment at the upper border of the word medial side the upper part this is the upper part let's say we divide this medial side into one part and two parts that's one two three part the upper part now presents a muscle called as levator scapulae muscle we use short form l v no l s levator scapulae muscle this muscle as the name implies it does what elevation and is supplied by a nerve called as the dorsal scapular nerve when we do the nerve supply to the upper limb we are going to discuss about all the nerves supplying the muscles as well as bone and joint and then we'll talk about the blood supply as well as the action but for the meantime we just want to know the muscles that is attached to this various lama so this upper part presents what is called the levator scapulae muscle the next muscle arising on the Media border is called as the rhomboid minor muscle. Rhomboid minor muscle is also going to come from the spinous process. Well, that's rhomboid minor muscle. The muscle looks like a rhomboid, so that is why the name rhomboid is given as it's kind of rectangular in shape. So that is why it got rhomboid minor. It is called minor because 
this one is smaller as compared to the other muzzle called as what rhomboid measure the rhomboid measure is going to come downward rhomboid measure muzzle rhomboid measure muzzle the rhomboid measure is located in free only at the media border of the scapula the minor is located upward just above the rhomboid measure and the other muzzle is called as the levator scapula muzzle what does the rhomboid major and minor do? This major and minor muscle they act as well to do retraction of the scapula. So by this we have completed about the muscle arising from the medial aspect of the scapula. We also know that the anterior surface of the scapula, the anterior surface of the scapula gives insertion to a muscle called the serratus anterior muscle. Serratus anterior muscle. The serratus anterior muscle has about its digitation, right? It has about its digitation. So the first digitation of the serratus anterior muscle is going to arise from the superior aspect of the anterior border on the medial side. The anterior surface, the medial border, the upper part of this medial border is going to give uh, attachment to the first digitation of the serratus anterior muscle. Second and third digitation comes from the middle part and the rest digitation is going to come from the middle part to the inferior aspect of this middle part. So that is where the serratus anterior comes from. It gets origin from the rib, from rib 1 all through to rib 8 and 9. So that is the origin of the serratus anterior and it gets attached to the scapula. So by this, we have completed about the origin from the medial side of the scapula. Let's see the origin from the lateral border of the scapula. The lateral border of the scapula, let's see from the supraglenoid cavity. The supraglenoid cavity gives origin to what we call as... This is the supraglenoid cavity, so it gives origin to a muscle called as the long... Head of biceps brachial, biceps brachial muscle. The long head of biceps brachial muscle is going to get origin from the supraglenoid cavity. Right, the biceps brachial muscle is the shift muscle of the anterior compartment of the arm. It does a lot of function to the arm, especially flexion of the arm. It also does pronation of the arm in mid arm flexion. So. That is the muscle that is originating from the supraglenoid cavity. The infraglenoid cavity is giving origin to the long head. This point is the infraglenoid cavity, so it's giving origin to the long head or, or triceps brachii. Triceps brachii muscle. It's giving origin to triceps brachii muscle. Long head. Long, triceps brachii muscle has three head. It has medial head. Uh, lateral head and long head. By the time we do humerus, we are going to see the origin of the medial and lateral head of the tricep brachia. So the long head is going to get origin from the infraglenoid cavity. Next is the teres minor muscle. Teres minor muscle. The teres minor muscle is going to get origin after the origin of the long head of bicep brachia. On the lateral aspect, the teres minor muscle is going to get origin at this point and it's going to insert on the humerus. It's going to insert on the humerus at which point? At the greater tuberosity of the humerus. But when we do the humerus, we are going to understand better where it is getting attached. So, by the meantime, the teres minor muscle is getting origin from the scapula and the lateral aspect in the upper part. The lower part is giving rise to teres major muscle. Teres major muscle, which is also going to insert on the humerus, on the medial lip of what is called as the intertubercular sulcus of the humerus. So the upper part is giving rise to teres minor muscle. The lower part is giving rise to teres major muscle. But at the inferior angle, is giving rise to 
lattice small docile module. Lattice small docile module. So lattice small docile module this is a very flat big module that is originating from the back side, lower aspect of the back, and it is located laterally, right? From the lower aspect of the back, which is close to the lumbar region, that is where it's going to get origin. Some of the fiber is also going to origin from the ali crest, right, of the hip bone. And when they get origin like that, from the spinal process as well as the ali crest, is going to come all the way. For example, let me give you a sketch of what I'm saying so that you understand better. If this is uh, your rough sketch, okay, let's say this is your sacrum boom, and then I have I'm drawing the Hebrew now. So I say this is your Hebrew, and uh, this is your spinal process. Now the latissimus dorsi muscle is going to get origin from all these points here, and then the upper border of the crest is also going to get origin at this point like this. So as it moves upward to insert on the humerus, let's say this is your humerus bone. Let's say this is the humerus. The lattice mount dosa is going to move upward and insert on the intertubercular sulcus. There is a groove in between the upper part of the humerus because the humerus is divided into upper and lower part and a shaft. So this upper part now has what is called a groove. The groove is called intertubercular sulcus. So that sulcus is where the lattice mount dosa muscle, after getting origin from the lower aspect of the back, is going to get inserted to. So as it is coming to this humerus now, some of the fibers of this lattice mount dosa is going to get attached to the inferior angle of the scapula. So that is how the lattice mount dosa muscle gets origin. So it's some of the fibers will get attachment or origin from the inferior aspect of the scapula. So this is about the origin of muscles on the lateral aspect as well as the medial aspect of the scapula. Next is the spine of the scapula the spine of the scapula is divided into four borders and what two surfaces the spine of the scapula is divided into four borders and two surfaces the posterior border of this spine is called as the ali the spinous 